Yeah, that, my name is uh, Fabrizio Manfredo Holman, and in this session I will try to explain the concept of my project and architecture and um, uh, some sub projects and yeah, the future and the kind that we are going. First of all, <coughs> it was quite clear that in the 2020 we would have a, a lot of data to handle. You know, because today we have 150 gigabytes per person, but it would the data that we have today is only 2% that expected in 2020. The big problem that we have is we try to use a common uh, file system that uh, is present in our computer or, or in our uh, storage area network, but this some like to put the, the tape on, on the street to push the street. You know, that we need something new. For this reason, we started with REST you know, to rethinking completely the storage. The main goal is to create high scalability, high availability network of the store. No, we want to remove the idea of the file. You can handle the file, but we want to work on the object. And for this reason, we call all the storage. Another interesting thing, we start the project because we want to test in, to find new technology, new paradigm that is made today a big framework to try the new technology. First starting point, this is quite famous. This is a Hadoop concept. Movie computation is cheaper than moving data. This is our first party. <coughs> the second, that comes from Amazon, there is always a field waiting around the corner. And the last, that comes from Ruby Guy, uh, we have to decouple as much as possible because we handle so many data, then we have to decouple and the element that made your solution have to evolve in, in different life cycle style, then you will need to decouple everything. From these three paradigms, we create five pylons. No, we work on the object. That mean, means we separate the data from the metadata. We try to mark each element with a revision or a hash to make a unique identification. This will be faster to look at. We want to introduce the cache, more intelligent cache, based on callback. You don't have to pull, you will be notified. This is one of the main concepts of our cache. We will notify if something changed. Also the transmission. Now we work in the network, the latency, the long distance is a big problem. We want to create a, a wide area network storage. We don't want to create a single storage for a single data center. Then. We need a compression. We need to transfer the data only if you need and what is changed in a special way. We also, to simplify the communication, we have today many firewalls, many protections, then we have to work on HTTP as much as possible. Obviously, we have to be distributed to decentralize. We remove any single point of failure. That means we need to make <coughs> replication of the data, we, de we need to spread around on multiple nodes. We have also to look up your data all the time or as much as possible. You don't have to fix configuration. You need to re retrieve the configuration that is better for you in the time that you use the data. And also, obviously, t today the security, in special way uh, after the NSA, is, is quite important thing. Well, uh, our structure is very similar to Amazon. Then we have more or less the same concept. We, uh, we have bucket and we have object. Objects are stored in bucket. What doesn't exist uh, today in the S3 is the cell concept. The, the bucket resides in a cell. I try to explain a little bit better. You have a client, the client made a lookup on DNS name, they receive back the list, a list of IP of resource locator, a list of cell that contain your data. No, you make the query to uh, DNS, you, in this way you find where is your packet. Then you have a list of resource locator. That means you still don't know exactly where it is. You know only the cell. For each cell, you can retrieve the list of the server that handled your, your data. Then we have three levels. No, we have a first lookup more global, that is more handled by DNS, we have a cell one that gives you, okay, my cell has this dimension, I have this list of the server, please use this one, 
or I have a couple of server that is full, please move on another region and so on. That is only for discovery and obviously from all this information the lookup <laughs> server return you also the type and priority. No, I'm a bigger than I can handle 400,000 connection or a small and I'm full for 90% and so on. To retrieve the data when you have the list of the server, that means metadata server and object you know, uh, and, and data that you can start you start, first of all, you need to retrieve the property of your object. Now you discover your bucket. Then second step, you have to discover what is your object. And the property of the object mainly is to retrieve the signature of each element that you need. Then you have metadata. What does it mean, metadata? It mean who created the object, the size of the object, and many other attributes. The data reside in a different server set. That means also you can scale in a different way. You know, if you have many operations that read <coughs> the metadata and less operation on write or, or read, you have different dimensions of the, of the cluster. No, we are in, the, in a cell and we have different kind of cluster. One for metadata, one for object. All this information would be cached by the client. No, you have a lookup. <coughs> Well, we have a federated authentication that you can use tokens, and kind of simi uh, similar idea behind uh, what, of Kerberos. You have the famous subscription. You now, I store some object in my in my uh, local cache. Please notify server has to notify if something changed. And you have two cache, one for metadata and one for the block. This is a permanent cache. That means it's stored on the disk of the VM. That means also when you restart your VM, the data is there, and then you can only revalidate with the hash or with the ID your cache that you don't need to transfer. When you have to make some operation, you need only to transfer the difference because you have all the hash and you have to send the hash. If you have to read, you have to check what is changing and retrieve only the block that you need because the other block is in your cache. We have the caches divided in disk and also memory to speed up, but mainly is a persistent cache. That is difficult to find another uh, file system today. At the moment, we don't have, but you can imagine immediately that you can handle a disconnected operation. You can sync your file system and resync when you will have connection. The infrastructure of the server, the architecture is divided in three main levels. We have our front end level that is both with, with the client. We have a manager level that where we have the business logic and we have a driver. You can understand that um, we have many pieces. You know? We try to divide each operation in a separate in the couple piece of software. That means we'll see in the next slide that each element has a dedicated uh, backend, dedicated database. That means you can scale up a specific function if you have a problem on a specific function. And also you can parallelize all the operations. Well, we can identify now the main service that is metadata, as I said. You can token for authentication. Well, we have authentication token. This is a kind of session, not end of the session. We have the resource locator in the side, we have the callback service, we have the block device that you talk with, with the server between blocks, and we have also a lock server to keep, if you need, the consistency between different or the different clients. As I said, why we have a, a huge scalability? Because each element has a dedicated storage. And that means you can scale out from horizontal or vertical. That means also is to be decentralized. No, because you can you don't have a single point that contains all the information. You can use all uh, for each backend a uh, separate database. We try to use as much as possible K value to use no SQL because it's quite fast, works very well for hash or better, it's designed to work with hash. Then we can scale in also in this case 
we can be very fast. We try to keep simple operation. Oh, we have a lot of database. We try to keep a single operation, atomic operation. In this way, we have we can conduct parallel operation. No, you don't have to wait. You can fire all the what you need because you have different DB that you can fire. No SQL is very fast. That everything is very fast. We also use on the back end on the server distributed uh, memory cache based mainly in the uh, bank cache D and uh, to reduce the number of variations on the back end. But this is not really needed. Well, I'm, I want to give you a smaller example on internal that is but probably you don't need to know what how it, what is like. No, how how is a PR bucket? Okay, a bucket has a name like a DNS. This is a DNS name. You will find our DNS. And you have a set of property that is famous metadata. You know, segment size, block size, max read, will, uh, standard of the class, and, and, and so on. Why do we have block size, max size? Because your object is divided in metadata and data. The data has a block then. You can specify, like today you have the block on the file system, but we are dynamic. You can change your block depending on your file. If you know the type of your file, you can decide to use large block, small block, and also the block are collected in segments to reduce the time of the transfer. That sometimes you need to 500 blocks, then you can ask the segment. Then you don't have to ask 500 ID to the backend. You can say, okay, please send me the segment Y or Z or and so on. But also the size of the segment you can decide when you store your object and you can change the size. Then you have metadata that where you have all the properties and you can figure out how many blocks, how many requests you can do, and the hash for each block. So and this is handled by this side. On the other side, you have the block and is collected by segment and is stored in a completely separate <coughs> A small difference, on, on the block side, we use a hash to trade track you know, uh, for, for understanding if we handle the same block. On the property, we use a serial because we are able to handle the versioning. You can enable versioning. And with serial, we also, through the serial, we use, uh, we implement a clock vector to um, yeah, to resolve problem of a contemporary commit or disconnected operation. Couple of other, no, the ID, as I said, is a name. ID object is a UID. And in this segment uh, is a combination between the position in the segment and the, the ID itself. And well, and the chunk data is mainly a hash. That's um, this you can read the ID of the of the of the single block. So we build with the composition of each element: so bucket name, segment position, uh, segment ID, position ID. In this way, we have a, a unique ID for all the environment. What you can do, um, what I said, is this is something that you can do in, in S3. Uh, you can create fake object that is kind of my point of the file system. Then you can connect one cell or one bucket to another bucket. Then in this way, you can create an infinite file system. And also in this case, uh, you have a unique you know, uh, path. You know, that that will be the path will be the same on all the file system because it's based on DNS, DNS plus your like S3. But the nice thing is that you can mount bucket in bucket, like today in the file system. As I said, well, sorry, we have a revision try to keep revision and versioning uh, light as much as possible, then we keep always the last version and we keep the difference of the previous one to uh, 
help a little bit the virtualization. This is very useful in virtualization. If you have to start a new VM, you can start from a gold image. That means the time of replication of the gold image is zero because you don't have to replicate any data. On the block storage, this is today is a sub project. It's a little bit more complicated because it's based on a distributed uh, block replication, <coughs> mainly based on consistent hashing. Then we try to keep uh, as much as possible uh, to handle the failure, not to re-replicate or rebalance the hash. And unfortunately, you know, from the previous one, while well, we use the three copies, or whether the, the user can decide which algorithm to write one read, to write two read, and so on. That the security of your data, you can decide. That is, is quite quite famous. And on the back end, uh, the failure is <coughs> detected by gossip server, gossip protocol, and each um, node has to handle other three, uh, other two nodes that for the replication. It is a small cluster in the cluster, and. In case of failure, we have uh, um, an election you know, to identify who is the master who has to receive the data and replicate to other nodes. But the infrastructure is we have a front end, and the front end is kind of proxy to the back end to, in case of, of the data. As I said, on the cache side, we have a distributed cache. We have a publish subscribe that you publish, please notify if this block or this data is changed. And we have a persistent cache on the client that is on the file. Well, as I said, security is important, but um, uh, we use SSL protocol. We, we, you can decide if you want to encrypt on the block level, that each block can be encrypted on the server, on the client obviously much better on, on, the, on the client. And we have an uh, ACL and NFS for schema of ACL. A small, why we use no SQL, uh, and why we try to you know, keep everything in SQL with ha uh, hash uh, and value pair. You can see with Redis, you are able to handle 500 550,000 requests per second with a single DB. That means you can install all the builder that you want. That from the concept of, of the cell, inside of the cell, no, the scalability, we don't have any limit in the scalability. That you can see also, you no, know, get and, and get is much faster. It's like 700,000 requests per second. With um, what? Uh, I think uh, we try with over 10,000 clients. But this is a, a back-end performance. That um, the code of well, yeah, the code is organized in four levels. But I already mentioned, so we have a protocol interface, we have a service, we have a manager, and we have a driver. What I want to say, we follow a little bit. If you know the cluster FS that each element can be replaced. No, each element is decoupled. No, as a standard interface, if you want to do something better, if you want to, um, for example, on the storage, you can use our storage, that is, the name is Pisa, or if you want to use the local disk, you can replace the driver and write the block on the local disk. And then you don't have to carry replication and so on. Uh, in the management, if you, want to do something specific <coughs> in, the, in the versioning, you can override the versioning class and, 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 and so Or if you want to another interface, now the interface on the platform, on the on the TCP, we have two interfaces, one is S3. We, uh, we have all the S3 command that we are completely S3 replacement. And we have our uh, RESTFS interface, that's uh, the big advantage that you have all the <coughs> data and, and the subscription to the callback. Um, what we use, mainly we use everything Python because we believe it's more simple to attract people for extend and for make experiments much faster for prototyping. <coughs> and well, uh, on the transmission in the back end, we use 0MQ and 
a bunch of other technologies. No, we, we use OAuth for authentication. No, we don't believe to, to store our credential in our system. Probably it's more make more sense to use an external one. And yeah, for now the DHT, the distributor, uh, the, the replication of the data is based on DHT. Today we use Kermelia. We want to move to pass three or a multi-dimensional distributed hash. The point is, okay, I told you a lot, probably you don't understand very well, but what, what, <coughs> why uh, you have to use a REST uh, or what is the advantage? You can use as a home directory. You can have a home directory everywhere in every your device, <coughs> a central point like Dropbox. But on, on file system level, no, you can mount. We have a fusion mount that you can mount and you don't care where you are. Um, you can use uh, as an object storage in an application. You, you can run an application that uses directly the interface that can have advantage. You can use also uh, for CDN because we have this replication adaptive. This is one of the things that we want to do, make adaptation on request and scale out the system. This is the recovery. We don't have any problem to replicate across the different data centers. Mainly, that is not I think the time is over. Uh, well, if we want uh, some of these topics, we'll be handled in the conference 2014 in CERN. <coughs> and I think the more interesting part is you can visit the experiment, the Atos uh, test, test plan in Geneva, that means I don't know how many meters below the ground, and the famous ring of 30 kilometers. And yes, um, that doesn't mean I don't want, uh, I don't want money, but I need mainly people that is interested in sharing the idea, props code. No, as I said, we use Python mainly because we believe in the prototyping, make the experiment, try to go forward. Um, well, uh, now the, the, the site is not updated. I hope to update soon. And we are rewriting a bunch, well, a big part. Then I think uh, we, we retire. That means we remove from the website the 0 0.1 version uh, because we don't want to confuse the people. I believe in one month uh, we'll be available to 0 0.2. That has a, a different scheme of distribution of the block. Then well, please keep in mind one month, check the site, try to download. Um, but the nice thing is that all these components, I talked about a lot of components, but you can stand install without problem in a single VM. No, use a single DB, single server, and um, yeah, then uh, you can try on your system. You don't need to handle on um, 10,000 nodes or something like that. Yeah, you can start to try, and, and, and with everything is included, it's meaning Python that you can understand it. You start and it's done. Any question? Yeah, I think we have time for one question. How does it compare to Ceph? Well, uh, I know that you come from Ceph, no? No, that's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and um, our inspiration on the file system come from Ceph, uh, come from OpenFS, come from ExtremeFS, come from TauFS. No, we try to collect all the good, very good idea. And from Ceph, we, we uh, get OSD, and especially with the distribution of the metadata, the auto-scaling of the metadata. <coughs> Well, um, I think we are more for wide area network because we are on HTTP and DNS base that for lookup. No, that that SAFT is more for high performance computing, but more connected in the data center. In the same data center, load latency. Well, you don't have, you have latency, but anyway. Well, I think is uh, we are more cross. We are more on the side of S3. We want to increase the performance, but I think is uh, is not for single application that has a very high high load I/O on the system, but it's more for many requests. No, I, I probably you understand. I believe. No, I don't know what you want to do in the future because I've seen a lot of interesting stuff. But anyway, all right. Thank you. Thank you.